I want to just simply say good morning to everyone this morning, tell you what we're going to do. Our theme this year is what? Okay, so they're going to have to get real loud and enthusiastic, right Larry? Our whole service today has its own theme of celebration. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this about three times this year, is take a Sunday to just celebrate some great things that are happening in the church. So I want you to look forward to that this morning. I want to call your attention to one thing that's very important. As we approach uh, Easter, just uh, three weeks I think, uh, we want to have a prayer time again. So hanging out in the foyer on the wall is a place for people to sign up. We're going to have 24 hours of prayer which means we need 48 people. So uh, that should be extremely easy for us to do as a church. In the half-hour sessions where we have two or three people, we'll have multiple places set up. There'll be security. Don't worry about any of that. It'll all take place here at the church. So please sign up for that today. We really are waiting to just start getting the first people to sign up. So look forward to that. But today is 100% about celebration. We'll start it with our music. The first song we're going to do, the choir will uh, begin. We'll be singing with them through part of it. I think you'll enjoy it. The music today is powerful. And uh, I think our job as Christians is to blow the paint off the wall in here in celebration of Christ and who he is. Would you agree? So uh, let's do that together today. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer and then I'll ask you to stand. God, we give you praise for everything that is good in our lives. And God, as we come to celebrate today, it is about you. It's about your son, Jesus, and his death for us. Father, our prayer is simple, that you be among us today, that God, the Spirit of God, move us to reverence, and the Spirit of God, move us to praise of who he is. God, it is a humble thing that we can come before you. But God, with pride given to us by the Spirit, say that we believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God. God, we stake our lives on that. We hang our faith and our very being on that for all eternity. And God, we praise you for that this morning as we sing and worship together. All of God's people say it as we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We believe, 
salvation and he's coming back again let the lost be found let the dead be raised in the here and now let love invade let the church live out what god will say we believe we believe and the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of god has torn the veil now we know your love will never fail we believe we believe we believe in god the father we believe in jesus christ we believe in the holy spirit and he's given us new homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken, for time will matter anymore. Beautiful land I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand. Where my home shall be eternal, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. I'm looking now across the river, where my faith will end inside. There's just a few more days to labor, then I will take my heavenly flight. Beulah land, I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand, where my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, I see the lights, I hear the singing, a brand new song of joy divine. My soul rejoices just in knowing that soon these pleasures will be mine. You love I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand where my home shall be eternal. You love sweet you love There's a land. Is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet. We shall be on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirits shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by. We shall be. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by. 
shall meet on that beautiful shore. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As we come into your prayer. We remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. Oh, we lift you up. We lift you up. Because of freedom, forever we change. Because of your love. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up. We lift you up. Songs of freedom forever will change. Because of your love. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up. We lift you up. With songs of freedom, forever we're changed. Because of your love, sing yeah. Oh, 
such love and sorrow meet. Oh, thorns compose so rich a crown. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, the wonderful cross bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. ever lost something? I bet everybody in here at one time or another has probably lost their keys. Just when you're getting ready to go someplace, you lose your keys. Maybe, uh, maybe your billfold. Can't find your billfold. So everybody in here has lost something, right? Well, today, I'm going to be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 15. Verse 1 says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And then Jesus told them this parable. Actually, he told them three parables in chapter 15 of Luke. He spoke of the owner's desperate search to find the lost item they were looking for or the lost person they were looking for. He told the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And then he also told of the celebration that happens when you find that lost object. When you find those keys, you're pretty happy that you found them, aren't you? Well, in, this, in these stories here, the parables, they were very happy when they found these lost objects. In these parables, the shepherd... The woman and the father, they represent God. The sheep 
and the coin and the sun represent unsaved persons. As we gather around this table each week, we come to celebrate the fact that God was willing to give up the most precious thing, His Son, so that He might find me and He might find you because we were lost. Without Jesus, we're lost. So God said, I'll send my son. Because of this great sacrifice, we now have a way. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. We have a way to the Father now because of this great sacrifice that we come around to remember every time we gather around this table. And let me tell you what God's response is. This is the good part. When we turn and come to the Father, He don't just stand and wait on us to get there. When we turn to Him, He comes running to meet us. And not only does He come running to meet us, He says, hey, let's get Him a robe, and let's get Him a crown, and let's welcome Him into heaven. Wow. You see... We got a day of celebration going on today. But we do that every Sunday when we gather around this table. Listen to what Jesus said in chapter in chapter 15 verse 9 he says, "There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents." Oh God, as we uh, come around this table, we we just are amazed Father of your love the sacrifice that you made for each of us through your Son. Father, we can celebrate that we have him in our lives and that we know him as our Lord and Savior. Father, again, as we uh, reflect on that time, reflect on that sacrifice, uh, just remind us each of your desire to find just one more and to share that gospel message with them. Father, we ask that you uh, bless these emblems Represent that broken body and that shed blood for each of us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk about celebration today, and are we're going to celebrate, and in this uh, whole theme of Christ in Us 2015, we have planned at least three weeks that we can come together as a church and celebrate uh, just part of what's going on in the church. The first thing I want to do this morning is deal with some numbers, just help you uh, with some numbers, some things that are exciting that I think you'll want to hear, and money, uh, and get that out of the way, but it's a time of celebration for us. Two years ago this month, this March, two years ago, 2013, we started a program called the 50-50 program that we ask people to give what they felt they could sacrificially give over and above regular tithes and offerings. And that money would be used to retire the debt on the building. But the more exciting and motivating factor was that we would be able to give a lot more money to missions so that half that money would go to missions over and above what the church is already doing, which is well over 100000 a year just to missions. And that was governed with this idea We would follow the scriptural directive in Acts of taking the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. So we'd go out in this co-centric circle of local missions so that we've been able to really help in a meaningful way the campus ministry at East Tennessee State University, the campus ministry at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. A little farther out, we've been involved to the tune of nearly $50,000 in a church plant in the Memphis area that is going strong now with a couple hundred people there worshiping and different things of that nature all the way across the seas and the farthest away being for us southern India which is around the world and the group that just came back from there and the church buildings and the sponsorship of ministers and helping in a very um, meaningful way in um, the spread of the gospel there. So let me give you some numbers. Since March of 2013 
the church has retired in principle just from 50-50 in principle $425,000 from our debt. I want you to hear this. That leaves us in debt for this entire complex, campus buildings and everything, right now $107,000. And as of April 1, we will be in debt roughly $80,000. This August, we're going to have a celebration. We're going to burn some things, okay? And we're going to have a weekend celebration that will involve a fantastic banquet uh, Friday night and also a picnic on Sunday, just a weekend of celebration for what the congregation has done to free that money up for greater works in the kingdom of God. So is that worth celebrating? Okay. The other thing, the other side of it, which is extremely exciting, I mentioned the missions, is in that same time period, over and above our regular missions giving, what's done by individuals, what's done by classes, what's done by the congregation's general budget, uh, in just two years, this program will go one more year, but in just two years we've given $435,000 to missions. And that, to me, is extremely exciting in what that's been doing. Now... I want us to do something this morning just to, to deal with the first few weeks of this year. We've been together now, I think, 10 weeks or 11 weeks for the year. It's hard to believe it's still that early in the year. But I want to uh, recognize some people. Most of them are able to be here this service. But I'm going to ask Norton Shump to come up and uh, his lovely wife. Norton was baptized on the 8th day of January of this year, and uh, when he comes up and introduces uh, Linda and, uh, well, introduces his wife, uh, I'll ask him a couple of questions about that because uh, Norton's a man, and uh, I'll tell you how he proved it the day of his baptism, okay? First of all, I'll let you tell us where you moved here from and all those good things. We moved here from Texas, from Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm about, what, two years ago? About two years ago, and uh, we just love it here. Uh, we love the climate. We love this church. We love David, and uh, we're just tickled to death to be here. Baptized January the 8th, and the temperature was about 14 degrees that day, and I came over here bundled up like an Eskimo, and you were in? Shorts. Okay, I don't understand. We didn't give a mental test. We went ahead and baptized. I was, I was born in Colorado. I was so. born in Colorado, but <laughs> anyway, some of it. anyway, it's exciting. I'm glad you were here, and you want to introduce Linda. This and, is my lo lovely wife, Linda. And her son is Brad Westbrook, who is about... 6'10". Yeah, 6'10", <laughs> which a lot of you, most of you know, he's always here uh, first service. But Norton, welcome. It's glad to have well, you, you David. and it's Linda's part here. of our church. Linda. This is Walker. He's in high school, and he was baptized on the 18th of January. I can't resist saying this, Walker. This is Walker walking up. <laughs> right? Walker, I'll let him tell you a little bit about yourself if you want to tell him uh, who your family is. I'm Walker. My mom and dad are Chance and Tracy Burleson in hey. the back over there. We'll have him stand. Hanson Tracy Burleson, okay. And you're in school? Uh, I got a Boone, a freshman. Freshman at Daniel Boone, okay. So you're part of our youth group. Yes, sir. And you were baptized by? Andrew. Andrew Church, our youth minister. Walker, we want to welcome you and your family. We're glad you're part of the church. Fantastic. <laughs> Alan, I'll let them, if you don't mind, just tell about your baptism, okay? Um, the first time I was baptized, I didn't understand it. But you had a good message that day. It actually made it past the flowers on the 25th about baptism. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's a pile down here. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> but um, you did such a good job explaining it. I just felt like I should have it done again. Okay. So we talked after church, and uh, Alan came back at 2 o'clock that afternoon, and we had a baptism, didn't we? You didn't try to drown me or anything? No. <laughs> Praise God, Alan. Praise God. We love you, brother. Um, that was the 25th of January. There were four baptisms on the 8th. And I, I want to introduce this one guy to get this out of the way, um, Bob Tallman. And I'll ask him to come on up. Is Bob here, second service? A lot of you will recognize Bob, and you won't know why. 
but his face will make you just a little bit nervous. And uh, when he comes up, I'll let him tell you why. Not that I've ever met him as you all did. Yes, I have. Okay. I'm now lying. Okay. And in church, too. Yeah. <laughs> Bob is retired. I am retired about a little over a year ago from the John City Police Department with 39 years in. And the last few years, oh, it gets better. <laughs> last few years, I work traffic. Does anybody know what we do in traffic? David does. We had a conversation one day in a hurry <laughs> to get to Dairy Queen after playing golf to, to get a hot dog. Yep, right? yep. Okay. But I am retired, so you don't have to worry about me. My partner, Tim Hensley, is sitting back in the back. He also works in traffic. We worked together for 18 years in traffic riding motorcycles. So it's a good job as long as you don't wreck one. Okay. And I, and I wrecked mine twice. So yeah. <laughs> Bob, welcome. It was a privilege and honor to baptize. Yeah, I golfed one day with Eddie McCready, and uh, preachers are important and need to get places in a hurry. And I needed a hot dog from the Dairy Queen. And uh, he said, David, when he walked up and saw it's me, before I say another word, can you even tell me what the speed limit was coming down that street? I said, 75. <laughs> wasn't that bad, but may I say it was embarrassing. Uh, Jessica Malone, uh, if she's here, and a great story, great story. So I'll let her tell you. Uh, we'll do this, answer a couple of questions. I'll, I'll tell you first, and Jessica, let me look. She was baptized the eighth day, same time Bob wasn't. Uh, Bob that afternoon, but Jessica that morning right after the service mm -hmm. and that was a day that will live in your life is important for several reasons so okay. you were baptized that morning at the end of the service and then what happened well then my then boyfriend was baptized as well afterwards about two o'clock with bob and then um later on he proposed to me so now he's my fiance yeah and they're getting married friday this friday <laughs> so we're looking forward to that wedding but she was baptized. Uh, they called me a little later, and we came back at 2, and Bob came at 2, and we had uh, those baptisms, and yeah, now you're going to be Mr. and Mrs., so it's a very important day, two baptisms and a proposal all on that Sunday, mm -hmm. but congratulations, Thank Jessica. You so much. Kimberly Owens, baptized um, February the 8th, and have Kimberly come up. Kimberly couldn't be here first service, she is a NICU nurse yeah. and had to work late last night or this morning, I guess, didn't no, you? No, it was last night. Okay. But uh, Kimberly, you were baptized February the 8th. Anything you want to say about that day? Or? Um, I, I was also baptized as a young child and I didn't understand what I was doing and your, your sermon on baptism. Got it, past it, the it flowers. Got past yeah. the flowers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was... It, you know, I, I prayed about it and thought about it and talked to you about it and decided that I needed to be baptized again. Okay. It's a fantastic day, and you've been married. Jared wants to stand. How long have y'all been married? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. And how many children do you have? We have three. Three in two and a half years. <laughs> uh, three, th three foster children. We're foster parents. <laughs> foster parents that they take care of. Fantastic young couple. Fantastic young couple. But... Welcome, and we are so glad you all are part of our church. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you now, as part of just celebrating, if you'll watch this video, what, what I want you to do is to see some of the things uh, that are going on in the church. This is a video of um, Casey Jones. Uh, you'll meet him through the video, obviously. He works for the city, um, the water plant, and uh, has training in that and the chemical side of it, and uh, has to work. Uh, every third Sunday couldn't be here this morning, but he's got a great story to tell that I want you to hear. Okay. Casey, you grew up in the church here, and a lot of people here have watched you grow up over the years, and others just getting to know you maybe this morning through this interview. Uh, you started CrossFit training a couple of years ago, and then something else 
happened last fall. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, a little bit about it? Yeah, um, last fall um, we had a leadership training, some classes here at the church, and I went to those, and it um, just gave me the desire to do more for God, and uh, that's when I decided that I wanted to do something more than just teaching here at the church. So uh, at my gym where I work out, I went to the head coach and I asked him, you know, if it would be okay if we started up a Bible study once a month. And uh, he said that would be a great idea. So once a month, we uh, people from the gym meet up. And we go out to eat somewhere, and we have a Bible study. And uh, there's people there that aren't in church right now and people that aren't in the Bible study yet, but they're interested in it. So it's going, it's going well. Great. And, and you're telling me you're reaching some people that have no Christian background, no church background the study yes what do you study we study topics that they want to talk about um, we've talked about temptation anger um, pretty much anything that's on their mind I'll ask them the week before and that's what we'll do a lesson on and it will be something similar to like we have Sunday school here at this church how many are attending your battle study right now we have 10 to 15 each time and uh there's also other people that are interested that are, you know, still making the decision to come or not. So, I I don't want to put words in your mouth, Casey, but God's using you, right? Yes. How does that feel? It feels good. Good. Praise God for you, Casey. Thank you for what you're doing. And can I tell you, as a minister, I'm really glad you're part of our church. Thank you. Thank you. Three weeks ago... We had uh, three men come to our, in front of our church. Mike Lewis, one of our leaders, John Payne, uh, Andrew Church, who is uh, our youth minister, and we prayed for them, and they went on a pretty difficult trip uh, because of the travel that's involved. It's hard to go to Indy. It's a 40-hour trip. And uh, they went over, and I want you to see a couple of things that happened there. You'll, you'll find this interesting and give you just a little bit of a flavor of what goes on uh, when we travel to another country. The only one that has the authority to tell us how to live life. To save your village. To save the world. You see, I want to tell you about myself. I want to tell you a story about myself. And how God came into me. How Jesus Christ changed my life. You see, I was on the outside of these fences. I was in the dark. I was wandering around in life. I tried working so hard to make money. I had friends. To feel included in life. To feel important like I belong to something. But nothing could complete me. I spent a lot of my life making fun of Jesus mocking this religion thinking my own thoughts living my own life I would make fun and say, look at these people. They must be crazy. And God brought me to my knees. And I said, Andrew, you're the foolish one. Because unless you... Worship me and follow me. Then you will be empty and miserable for the rest of your life. And so God told me, He said, Come over across the fence. Be a part of the kingdom that is mine. Where you can be full. Where you can be complete. 
The older man somebody asked about that came up on the stage, and I said, there's just proof that there's a Dick Morris in every congregation. <laughs> so, but uh, John Payne, come on up a second. John was on that trip, and he can tell you more about it. And one of the first things... Um, John, it looked like that crowd was just children. Would you explain that? Yeah, the crowd was actually 500 adults and children. They set the children up front, I guess, so they can keep an eye on them. If you'll also notice, when Andrew was speaking, he kept talking about the fence. That's because there was a fence on the other side, and there were a lot of people out in the road just listening to that part of the sermon. Uh, what we did was Mike would speak first for about 10 minutes, and then I would speak second for about 10, and then Andrew, the closer church, would speak for about 10 or 15 and that's the part that you saw. He did a great job uh, concluding the sermons and bringing people in uh, for that. I'm not sure if any baptisms occurred out, out of that, but that's what they were hoping for, some baptisms to occur okay, out of that. Okay, they'll service. find that out later. Right, right. And, and that was in a village that the majority had never heard the gospel preached at all. This was a new work for Abraham. It was a night revival or, hmm. or night evangelistic session. And your giving made that happen. Yes. I want you to know that. Yes. Uh, how many baptisms is true? We did a total of 92. We did. We were four hours off the plane, and we dedicated a church that had been provided by 5050. Uh, we also did some preaching there, and then we baptized 12 people in a baptistry that had about two feet of water in it, which was kind of okay. interesting. But we got to do that, and then we had a worship service uh, last Sunday, actually, with about 800. We got to speak at that. And then we baptized 80 people there at the center is where it was conducted. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. How's Abraham doing with his health? And he, he's doing well. I mean, his leg is swollen somewhat, but he gets around and, and does well. He can't drive or anything like that yet. We had a driver this time instead of himself, but he gets around and does some things. Fantastic. Thanks for going. Okay, Again, thank you. How many times have you been to Indiana? This is my third. This was okay. Mike's fifth, my third, and Andrew's second. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you, John. Okay. Let me introduce you to one more video I want you to see this morning. This is a fantastic uh, story you're going to see. Hi, Monica. Hello. Uh, I want people to hear your story. You moved here from Churchill, I think you said. You were employed here locally, but were homeless at the time. So you were living at the Value Place. Mm -hmm. And you went to enroll your oldest child in school at uh, Boone's Creek Middle School. Now I'm gonna let you pick up the story there. What happened that day? We were in the office and doing the paperwork and I was explaining to the secretary our situation when Miss Nancy came in, the school nurse, and she was there when I was explaining our situation where we were at. And she said, oh, I go to the church right next to the value place at Boone's Creek Christian. You guys should come. You can come on Wednesday nights. We have dinner and Bible study, and you'd really love it. And I explained my work schedule didn't really match too well. And we'll, we'll get the kids, and we'll help them out. And whenever you can come after work, you can just come by, too. And they, did, did anybody from the church come get the kids? Uh, Miss Susie, Miss Nancy, Miss Amy, Miss Tammy, Miss Carrie, the whole women's ministry chipped in to help make it possible. Okay, so Susie Redman, mm -hmm. Amy Shipley, mm -hmm. Carrie Gunning, mm -hmm. Tammy Payne, mm -hmm. uh, just different ones came. Did they do anything else? Um, they helped give us gift cards and, and gas money and everything because my paycheck pretty much went to the hotel bill, so 
They helped, they even gave us some clothes and things. Then when we did find a home, they helped to furnish it and get us stuff for that too. That's great. It's fantastic. So you didn't come to church uh, to be a part of the body here for a couple of weeks till after the children had come, right? Was your first visit a Wednesday night? It was. What happened that Wednesday night? I was just so moved by you and the people here and I just I felt the spirit tell me that it was time for me to get baptized so when some, the Wednesday night service was over I went up to you and I asked you to baptize me and I remember did. it well <laughs> and when we got into the baptismal pool I remember looking out and the musicians who were going to rehearse mm -hmm. had all stopped and Jimmy Love, and you were baptized in the pool right here behind the screen. Uh, but Jimmy Love uh, turned around. I can remember him with one arm on the guitar, smiling. You probably didn't notice that, but smiling, and they were also happy for you. That's been close to two years ago, hasn't it? A year. A year. It was a year, two years ago, something like that. Yeah, Time been twice. a while. Yeah. Been a while. <laughs> And you're still here, you're part of the church, your children are here. Where do you work now? Um, for Heavenly Sunshine, we're in home non-medical caregiving service. Good. Where are you living? Uh, actually in Kingsport, but we still come to church here because we love yeah. it so much. So life is going better, isn't it? Yes. Praise God. Yes. And we're glad you're part of our church, Monica. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Monica, uh, she said, was baptized here uh, on a Wednesday night a couple of years ago. and has her children with her. Daughter was the one enrolling at the middle school. And she talked, and I want you all to hear this uh, real close. She, she talked about going to the office, and a person in the office um, simply hearing her story just because they happened into the office and asking her if she could come and worship. Um, tell us, um, you, you shared this with group of us this past Wednesday night. Name some of the churches you had visited in the past. And, and I don't want you to hear this. I, I want to make a point with it. It's not anything negative about a church, but just some of the um, denominational backgrounds. And Pentecostal, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Baptist, Episcopalian, Calvary, Community, Christian, yeah. almost all of them. Okay. The, and the churches were not mean or anything. It's no. not at all what we're saying. But Monica's story was an interesting one because she came from a non-Christian uh, background and wanted to know about God. And so she said as a child she would spend the night with friends or as a teenager on Saturday so you could go to church with them. So she had all of these flavors that were there. Uh, but then is new to the area, living in a not best situation at the time and uh, looking for things to be better. And Miss Nancy is what she refers to her as. And Miss Nancy is Nancy Stidham, who is a nurse, school nurse. And she's, Nancy, come up here. And when I talked to Nancy about this, we had to connect the dots to remember that invitation. And so we have a family here, and we have a Christian, a lady that's buried with Christ in baptism um, a couple of years ago because Nancy just simply said, will you come worship? So Nancy, as a church, as a friend, uh, we want to say thank you to you for living out that great commission and just giving that invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> My daughter actually got baptized here last year. Yeah, your daughter was baptized well, last baptized. year? Yeah. And uh, it's just been great family, and they're here very faithful, and we appreciate that very much. Nancy, thank you again. Okay. The scripture we read, and as, as Larry pointed out, there's three three parables in Luke 15. And it's the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the prodigal son, is how we know it, or the lost son. And I want to read one of those par parables in its entirety. And surprising, it's three verses. 15th chapter, 8th verse. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins. This would be a drachma, which would be a day's wages minimum. It was of great value to her. And she lost it. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Which, in our way of thinking, our culture, our time, it must be an awful dirty house. It's just get a lamp and sweep. But house probably clean, no electricity, uh, dark. 
uh, naturally would be in the homes of the day. And the floors would be dirt with stone laid in. There'd be a lot of little cracks and all that. I think the best way to understand is like you might go to a state park and see a stone walkway with dirt. And so she's brushing, maybe down her hands and knees, brushing with that lamp, saying, this is of great value, I've got to find it. And probably took some time. So when she finds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors. You know, in impoverished land, it's a lot of money. They come together and she says, rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. Great value. Next verse. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We've celebrated today, and I, I want to mention something that will not sound like celebration, but I want you to hear it in light of celebration, okay? As a church this last year, we've taken a, a lot of jabs and right hooks. Um, I'll tell you that. Uh, some difficult things. All of which, not, not any problems in the church, but all of which has been um, some very serious blows to some families through divorce and some very serious blows to families through the broken world uh, because of illness. Um, we have some of the strongest active members of our church now that are going through tremendous illnesses. And I'll just mention some this weekend, uh, just this weekend, not trying to mention everybody, but... Gene Kefauver with uh, brain surgery this last week and very, very sick and being tended to by her family around the clock and uh, by doctors. Um, Bill Hull, who continues his battle with cancers in the hospital again this weekend and, and going through some difficult times. And um, we want to keep th those families in our prayers. And Carmen, Bill's wife, and Andy and Mike and, and Michelle and that whole family in our prayers. Um, John... Conley, who works in the sound booth, uh, got a call and had to fly out early this morning. His mother was in Miami and fell and broke her leg real bad and had to go through surgery. And she was down on a trip, a vacation. And um, so difficult time for that family right now. Travis Thayer and Penny, who are very active part of our church and great family. His father, who's been a minister, retired minister and a good man, uh, had a stroke about 3.30 this morning, and so that family was with him, a, a bad stroke this morning. So there's a lot going on that is what Satan enjoys. We celebrate that our faith is in Christ. Amen? That's what we celebrate. That's what every one of these stories been, this morning been about, is Casey reaching out to people who won't set foot in a church, and now they're hearing the gospel, Andrew preaching the gospel to people who had never heard it, Monica's story and all who have been baptized this year. And there's, there's many other stories. Baptism's not the only thing. There's many other stories. But I want you to leave with one thought today and, and wrap this up in the gift paper of celebration. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of angels over one sinner. If you were working for a living and your job was to sell wickets and your boss called you in and said, you got to sell one wicket and we'll rejoice, you'd say, I can't get an easier job, can I? Think of one person that you could do, and I love this, what Nurse Nancy did, what Nancy Stidham did. One person you could say, oh, come worship with me. I'll pick you up, I'll do whatever, whatever the needs are. Or just a co-worker, somebody, would you come worship with me? And it will be amazing what God and the power of the Holy Spirit will do in people's lives. I will promise you that, or we're wasting our time. One person. Can everybody accept that challenge? Yeah, if we choose to. One person that we would just in the next nine months, let's say, Ask, would you come and worship? Last thing, if you're visiting today, we celebrate that. We're not going to ask you to stand and tell us your name or put you on the spot, but we're glad you're here. I, I would love to meet you um, as the minister. Uh, nobody special, just the preacher. I would love to meet you right back. There's a little room back here to the left of this center aisle. I would love to meet you today if you're here visiting. But please take that today. We've had a lot to celebrate, a lot that's going on in this church, and there's many more. And I would just simply tell you, take that idea of one and celebrate with who?
Who is that for me, God, that I can invite? We're going to stand together. We're going to sing a, a closing song. And if there be any decision anyone would uh, want to make today, public decision for Christ, I'll ask you to come as we sing. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you. Father in heaven, as we conclude our time before you in prayer, we thank you that the knowledge of the scripture that tells us that your spirit is alive, active, and sharper than any two-sided sword, and we know what that means by what we've witnessed today, how Christ in us is active and alive, and we thank you that we are involved as a part of this church, looking forward to ways that you can continue to work in each of us with the challenge David gave us today for each one of us just to have our eyes on someone that we can plant the seed of Christ in. And for the blessing of celebrating you today, we thank you through Jesus' name. Amen. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe.